So let's continue our installation. What you see here includes additional packages that may be installed on the system, including Solaris 10 Extra Value Software, Solaris 10 Documentation, which is self-explanatory, and usually for server class system that's going to be in production, you don't need to install documentation. It just wastes disk space and risks fragmenting the disk. But in the event that you're learning or need one reference system, certainly install the documentation. You'll need to download the documentation ISO from sun.com. There's the Java Enterprise System and the Solaris Software Companion. Let's just expand each of these. Now, if you want product information for each of these products, or each of these package groups you can press F4 and if you simply want to see what's included just press spacebar where you see the greater than symbol ensure that the cursor is hovered over it press spacebar and you'll notice that the options the submenus collapse so the Solaris 10 extra value software includes Sun validation test suite 6.1 and then Sun install check we're not interested in those packages Solaris 10 documentation is 214 megabytes that's optional. The Java Enterprise System is about 1.7 gigabytes. And the Solaris Software Companion is where you'll find all the open source goodies that Solaris 10 is able to run and as a result will make Solaris 10 a contender in the free operating system space along with Linux. If you want more information about each of these packages, simply navigate to the group. They're all grouped, by the way, so you're not seeing package names here. You're just seeing groups. For example, in Application Accessibility, if we press F4, you'll see a brief description of the packages that are included, followed by F2 to leave or escape this menu. So again, F4, and it tells us that we will, can expect to find utilities, such as BRLTTY, Emacs Speak, you, you name it, to help the disabled users of Solaris. Let's move on to application editors. Editors are always a popular item. And we'll F4 to get product information. You'll see this includes Bluefish, which is a popular script editor. Emacs, Gawk. Gawk is very important for parsing fields within a shell environment or within shell scripts. Joe, which is another popular editor. Sed. Vim or VI improved as well as XEMAX. Let's F2 to OK it. And for this install, we're going to skip the extra packages just to increase the speed in which we install the software, get a system up and running, and later on we'll explore installing when we go or when we install the system using the network or via the network. Let's F4 to get more information about application networking just to get a sense of some of those packages. CUPS is the common Unix printing system which has superseded LPR which is used still within the Solaris environment. Etherreal, Fetchmail, these are all common open source programs. Snort, TCP Dump, Open LDAP. If you have any need for any of these packages by all means install them. Publishing, expect to find programs like XPDF, Groff, ESP, GS and so forth. Let's go back application utilities you can expect to find all these applications here some may or may not be familiar but they're useful applications such as multimedia related applications and desktop environment this particular group contains the setup for KDE Solaris 10 certainly can run KDE but it defaults to GNOME that's F2 to go OK development languages if you're going to be doing any of development or scripting you may want to install Python Ruby or some of these other programs the GCC might be necessary if you intend to compile programs on your system so if you intend to download source quote code that is and compile it you'll want to have GCC or GNU C compiler installed on your system but again there's a software group which takes care of these packages for us and there are many categories all the way through X applications system demons let's just briefly look at it you'll see IMAP PFTPD as well as squid the proxy server system emulators includes LX run and wine wine is run heavily in the Linux community it allows you to emulate Windows and run Windows based applications now let's take a brief look at the X applications that are included with the companion. 
and they include X cups, X CPUs that is, VNC, an important app, X term, Sane, which allows you to scan, the GIMP, which is a tool for acquiring images, which rivals Photoshop, and so forth. So again, in order to install these packages, you'll need the companion CDs or the companion DVD. You'll need to specify, or an NFS location uh, somewhere on the network where you can the companion CD or DVD has been dumped, the contents of which have been dumped. So that's what you'll find in the Solaris software companion. But again, for now, we're not interested in these packages. We'll look at them later on. So we'll have two to continue. And this menu prompts us for additional software that may be out there on the network that we'd like to install during the installation of Solaris 10. The none option is selected by default but you could specify a, a CD, a DVD or an NFS mount somewhere out in the network causing the installer to search the location that you specify for additional software, additional useful software. Let's have two to continue. We're almost to the point where the installer will be left to itself and you'll notice another important part of the installation process and this section contains the six groups or the six different ways you may install Solaris. All the way to the bottom you'll notice that there is the smallest footprint of them all which is just under 900 megs it's, or just under 875 megs. It's called the Reduced Networking Core System Support. This particular mode will provide networking support but it doesn't enable networking so it will allow you to boot the system and connect to the network if necessary it provides the basic drivers kernel and software necessary for getting up and running and connecting to the network but no additional software such as X windows compilers and so on core system support provides everything reduce networking core support provides plus additional items and in fact an F6 will return if it can find the help information on it and user system support is usually ideal for end users developer system support provides development tools the entire distribution provides compilers and the entire distribution plus OEM support provides everything else found in entire distribution plus drivers for hardware devices that are not installed on your system physically installed on your system Ideally, you want to select entire distribution plus OEM support or entire distribution. If you don't think you need additional drivers, then just go at the 4500 megabyte or 4.5 gigabyte option of entire distribution, which leads us into a quick segue of what are the system requirements for Solaris. We mentioned you need at least a 120 megahertz processor. You need for a graphical install 512 megs of memory for a text install, which we're currently doing 256 megs of memory and ideally a good seven gigabytes of storage if you consult Solaris's documentation they'll say you'll need somewhere around 6.6 .6 to 6.8 gigabytes for the install that we're currently doing and you'll notice that after the system's up and running that the Solaris footprint doesn't use the full size specified it uses a smaller footprint but the, es the estimates are higher to buy room for subsequent installations or subsequent upgrades and subsequent patches so once Solaris 10.106 is installed on a system you will continuously patch it as a good systems administrator and you may attempt a live upgrade at some point just to test the software out or to not impact production which requires additional space or you may configure Solaris's zones so you may configure zones other than the global zone or non-global zones causing Solaris to mirror most of the file system and require an additional space so ideally you want to place this software that is Solaris on a system that has ample storage but I should go without saying because any machine that you'd buy nowadays would have ample storage and it should be of no concern so bank on about seven gigabytes of storage required, half a gig of memory, preferably a gig, and a good video card and monitor and keyboard and mouse and so forth to run this as a workstation. But as simply as a server, you don't need any graphics support. You just simply need a lot of memory and a lot of storage. So let's have two to continue. We're going to go with the entire distribution. And what you'll see is a layout of the one disk 
that's installed on a system. Now later on when we discuss file systems within Solaris, we discuss how disks are ID'd. What you'll notice is as follows. There are three partitions, 0, 1, and 2. One disk, C0, three partitions, 0, 1, and 2. And as you can see, this is the proposal. It's going to create one large root file system. It'll also create a swap file system and the rest will be well there will be no additional space for anything else so it tells us on the screen we must select the disks for installing Solaris here's a disk C0 T0 in fact this is the second disk and the third disk but here's the disk that we'll be working with we can edit the disk if we'd like to modify the proposal if we press F2 it'll allow us to modify the partition here's the Solaris F disk that we mentioned that will be created one large partition with a little space left over for the swap partition so here are disks and or here are the partitions that is on this first disk and this is the default disk you as you may or may not have noticed this particular system has three hard drives three SCSI hard drives C0 is the first hard drive which contains three partitions as per the Solaris proposal so we'll have two to continue but again depending on how you want to use the system you may want to lay it out differently here we're prompted to preserve data the Solaris 100106 installer gives you this option so in the event that you do have an existing UFS file system the default for Solaris 10 you can preserve that information and Solaris will simply overwrite the files that pertain to the operating system leaving your data files here we want to continue we don't want to preserve anything and now we have the ability to lay out the file system so we've selected a disk in the other section here we can actually auto layout or manually lay out the file system if we go ahead and press F2 to auto layout the suggestion is as follows Solaris will create a root file system that's what you see here which is pretty much most of the space and a swap file system which will be at the beginning of the disk so it'll be a swap file system followed by the root file system which will be the remainder of the space so in other words the installer creates two file systems if you have experience with Linux at all you'll notice that this is common within most Linux distributions to create simply two file systems allowing the administrator the flexibility to create multiple file systems during and after installation so the rationale here is that all of the mount points such as var, opt, user, user open win, etc and so on will be stored within the default root file system one big partition of roughly 35 gigabytes so if this is how you want to proceed then go ahead and do so we'll do so we'll be installing multiple times so we'll get an opportunity later on to make the changes and here you'll see C0T0 which is the first disk and it has multiple slices the S that you see at the end of the nomenclature indicates the slices slices 0, 1, 2 and 7 are our slices that we'll be using notice that Solaris dedicates most of the 36 gig hard drive to the export home directory treating this as a system that will be used by multiple users or in some sort of NFS fashion the export home mount point is the default location for non-privileged or non-root users on the system. So as you create users on your Solaris system, their home directories will be stored by default in export home. That's where you'll create the home directories and you also have the ability to share out the export home directory using NFS or it's encouraged to share out items beneath export. But if this is not how you intend to use a system, you may want to rearrange the storage. For example, let's say roughly 30 gigabytes is too much for export home and you think that the root file system should have more space you'll then want to just customize the files the proposed file system layout and for each partition you'll need to make the changes but in order to in increase one particular mount point you'll need to decrease another so in order to give the root file system more storage you'll need to decrease something else and logically we should decrease the mount point that's occupying or that will occupy the most amount of storage so let's reduce export home from roughly 30 gigabytes to about 10 gigabytes this should suffice because it's a server class system we don't anticipate multiple users logging on often and it will increase the default root file system from roughly 4.2 gigs to making it 15 gigabytes 
approximately. These are all approximations, of course. Solaris will handle the rest. Notice also that the default swap partition or swap file system is 500, roughly 512 megabytes. It's set to 517. This is the default swap file system that's laid out by the installer. Keep that in mind. This is just a default. It can be manipulated to suit your needs, depending on what your swapping needs are. But you can also always create partitions once the system's up and running and turn on swapping on those partitions all while the system's up and running re without rebooting in the event that you think that you need to swap more. It's usually not a good idea to promote swapping, so go with Solaris's default, and if you find that you're ex exceeding physical random access memory, then you may want to add more random access memory, but as a temporary stopgap or as a temporary patch, you can provision temporary swap file system space. So here's our proposal, and this will yield us with roughly 9.2 gigabytes free. We'll have to OK it, and this is what our new proposal looks like. A root file system of 15 gigs, swap of a roughly 512, an overlap which represents all the space on the disk, and last but not least, export home which is 10 gigabytes, and that'll give us some space for downloading stuff from the web for installation. So we'll have to continue and it asks here if we'd like to mount software from a remote file server. The remote file server can be any mix based system or any system that supports NFS. We don't need to so we'll skip it and now here's a profile of the installation. This is a summary that you'll see in the graphical or text based installers presenting to us what the installation process will do. It'll basically install with the locales UTF-8, ENUS, ISO 8859-1, but it'll default to POSIX-C. It's Solaris 10, the entire distribution, not with OEM support, with a file system layout of a root file system of roughly 15 gigabytes, a swap partition of roughly 512, or half a gig, and an export home for users, files, and home directories of roughly 10 gigabytes. Once that's complete, F2 to begin installation, and here it says there's unused space but this is not a critical error we can skip this basically the installer notices that we've left roughly 10 gigabytes free for no apparent reason again later on while the system's up and running we can make use of that space now what's going to proceed from this point which we'll go away from until it's finished is basically just an exchange of the disks that are required so rather than wasting our time here exchanging disks. We'll exchange the disks and once the installer gets towards the last disk we'll resume recording and finish up the installation, confirm that it comes up and then move on to installing Solaris in additional ways. So at this stage you'll notice the megabytes remaining and the megabytes installed and so far we're roughly at 30 megabytes so it's moving along nicely.